Welcome to the Geek Easy, fellow geeks. I feel the need to do this tonight. Normally I do my haul video first, but I don't have them all yet. I will do that tomorrow. But I did get my hands on this. Batman Fortress number one. Published by DC. Written by uh, Witta, W-H-I-T-T-A. Uh, the art is Robertson and Rodriguez does, I think he's this the inker. I got this because, you know, I'm, I get Batman stuff. And this is probably one of the worst Batman books I have ever read. I don't even know if this guy knows any, virtually anything about Batman. I mean, come on. I mean, okay, so what the basic premise of this book it's a one of one and eight. Superman has disappeared, and there's some sort of like an alien invasion. So Batman has to uh, take care of the problem himself. All right. Okay, so Superman would be a good person to take care of it, but he's not there. We don't have anybody else that can do this stuff. Like, maybe Green Lanterns, you know, maybe they have a little experience in you know, dealing with aliens and stuff. You know, can't have them do something like that. Uh, but, okay, so... Starts out with uh, Aaron Wayne Manor and a couple guys try and break in because they heard that he's back, uh, Bruce Wayne's going to be out of town. They come in and they start taking stuff, and Bruce Wayne is there, and he just starts to beat them up. Not as Batman, not anything like that, but he just he just beats the hell out of these guys. I. Bruce Wayne isn't known for that type of stuff, so the, you've got these guys that are just going to be sitting here uh, saying, hey, broke in there, and this guy fights like Batman. Uh, and then we have uh, Gordon up on the roof with some other people and uh, Bullock, and there's no electricity, so they're trying to ground some batteries off of cop cars to be able to turn on the bat signal because there's no electricity the radios don't work and Bullock is arguing against that and seems like he's you know just you know it's, it's it's a pain in the it's kind of stupid now this is the part that gets my goat or is or is uh Peter Griffin says, grinds my gears. So we have a scene right here where he, you know, uh, first of all, you know, they know that, they're, that there's some alien ship out there that's shutting down the power grid. And they're like, oh, well, I'll take care of that in the morning. I have to go and try and uh, deal with stuff throughout the city. All right? Okay, so we got the huge threat of uh, this supposed alien shutting down power throughout the globe. And everything, and releasing he's really some the electricity going out release the people from Arkham. Batman's got to take care of that. So uh, Batman's going to say, "Oh, we'll take care of that in the morning. I got to take care of this." No, no, he's got the Bat family, man. He has sent the Bat family if he's going to do this. Send the Bat family out to take care of the stuff in the city. If he has to be the one that goes to take care of this, he does that, send the Bat family out to take care of the city. Oh, and he's also, you know, making the Justice League, who he called, wait for him. But here is the scene. We have all these riots in 
the city because power's out, people are going to be riding. And he says, uh, haven't seen a night like this in a while. Last time it was this bad was when the fear gas was in the water supply. Only so much I can do. Need the practice. Uh, hunt the big fish. Protect the little fish. Now, so we've got all these guys, and he's like, uh, these all these places all have insurance. Not my job to protect their profit margins. In my father's day, the American dream used to mean something, an honest wage for an honest work, f food on the table, liberty and justice for all. So basically, he's sitting there saying, you know, the whole reason he got into being Batman to fight like street level crime and stop this type of stuff, he doesn't pay any attention to anymore. He's got to go for the big super villains and the big stuff. You know, don't worry about the small crimes. There is really kind of a situation like this, a small thing. He's got more important fish to fry than doing his original mission. He's got the Justice League to take care of the big ones. He can take care of this. Or if he wants to go do this, he can get the Bat family to take care of this. Take care of this. He's going to ignore all the street stuff, which is just asinine. And then he also uh, gets to uh, crime, uh, crime Alley. And he says he doesn't like going there because it makes him uncomfortable. This person does not seem to understand the concept of Batman. His main job, his main thing is to fight the city, you know, fight crime in the city, to fight, take care of the smaller people. And, you know, if the supervillains come along and take care of, uh, start doing stuff, he'll get, take care of them. But this stuff, the, the, uh, the riots and them looting stores and destroying things, and a couple scenes where he's, uh, people are trying to rob stuff, which he actually does stop. That's his ballywick. So I don't know if the guy who wrote this is just that has no idea what he's doing, or if DC is taking us for fools and just think that we'll you know, accept this and say, oh, this is entertaining even though this isn't Batman. And yes, I understand this is probably, this is an else world. But they either just don't care and just want to try and sell Batman books or they're just trying to take us for being stupid. Either way, I cannot recommend this book. I mean, it's, it's, it looks good. The art in there, is, in here is really good. The story sucks and I will not be getting number two and if I could just I will give this if anything like a point two five out of five it was a bad book and it's just I sort of wish that I could get my money back for it it was it was bad but anyway let me know in the comments below what you thought if you read it and uh, like, subscribe, most of all. Enjoy your comments, hopefully, but not this one because it sucks. Anyway, have a nice night.